Já imaginou o noivo sair bailando com o bolo no dia do casamento? Esta é a dança do Korovai, o ponto alto dos casamentos ucranianos. O pão doce é todo enfeitado e vira símbolo do sol e do amor que deve habitar a vida do novo casal. Hey, hey, this is Kamen the Language Czar. So in this video today, I'm going to talk about Ukrainians in Brazil. Yeah, you heard that right. There is a Ukrainian community in the south of Brazil. And I actually went there to see if it really existed. Um, this is part of a little series of uh, videos I'm doing about minority European cultures in the south of Brazil because last year uh, in January, February, March, I went to Brazil and actually sought out these places. I read a little bit about them online, was a little bit skeptical whether they existed or not. There wasn't that much evidence on YouTube or on other uh, kind of main uh, search engines like Google. And especially, that was especially true about Ukrainians in Brazil. Now, If you watch this channel regularly, you know that I spend a little bit of time every year in Ukraine itself. And I have never met anyone there who even knows about this diaspora. It's completely forgotten. And I read about it uh, a little bit online. I said, okay, I found one little grainy documentary. It seemed to talk to some people in Ukrainian in the church there. I thought, okay, is it really going to be genuine or not? There's only one way to find out. I got on a bus and I went into the interior of Brazil to Parana uh, state, which is right in the south. And I went to this town. I actually had a friend uh, who lived nearby. So we, uh, I went to see her there and then we took a car and we drove the extra hour. Now, the scenery around this town was spectacular, right? They had all these waterfalls, uh, really amazing natural parks. So it was worth the trip out there in any case. So how do things go when I tried to speak Ukrainian? Uh, as a first disclaimer at the time, I didn't actually speak Ukrainian, that's a project I've had this year, but I did speak Russian, which is a cognate language, and it would allow me to at least understand uh, people, uh, the Ukrainian Brazilians, if they spoke to me. Now, the town is called Prudentopolis. It's located maybe about five hours uh, by drive into the interior of Paraná state. That's a state in the very south of Brazil. And the reason for the uh, legacy of Ukrainian culture there is that in the late 19th century, a lot of immigrants fled uh, Galicia, which is part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they emigrated to Brazil, and they were actually given land by the Brazilian government. Now, there are some historical reasons why they invited these um, immigrants from, well, Ukrainian-speaking immigrants uh, to uh, Brazil, and that was because they'd actually previously had a war in the south of Brazil. It wasn't as, you know, it was a little bit sparsely populated. They had all these rivals, uh, Spanish-speaking rival countries around them who were independent, who You know, they had a few wars uh, amongst those countries, so Brazil was obviously concerned that there might be either secession or that they might get invaded. So they wanted to uh, invite people in who they thought would be loyal uh, to the Brazilian state. And there were people basically given land there. So I went to Presentopolis and my first, I mean, I tried in the beginning to see if people would speak Ukrainian with me. Um, that didn't work out as well in the tour office. The tourist office, the guy looked Ukrainian, but he didn't speak in Ukrainian. Then I went to a local restaurant and the owner said, well, I don't speak Ukrainian, but the waitresses here do. Now, I spoke to them in Russian and yeah, they all spoke Ukrainian back to me, which is incredible. And you consider that the immigration was in, you know, the very late 19th century and they still speak it. So the town Prudent Tepos actually has a Ukrainian museum. They have some Ukrainian traditional festivals. There wasn't so much evidence of it directly in uh, the city itself. And um, just, uh, you know, there are obviously a few things, a few buildings that look a little bit Ukrainian, but not really that it's like a Ukrainian town uh, all, all in all. But the museum was interesting, went through the whole history of uh, the Ukrainian immigration. Uh, as you'll see here, uh, the curator spoke to me in Ukrainian, so I'll let her take it away. Onde eu morei, ou uh, em Odessa, no sul? Ah, acho que tem Odessa e Pedro Bovais, na Jerusalém de Comalva, a pouco eles que deixaram os humildes. Meto de rubor, o crítico e móvel, chamei na Bichelha de Nascha e Patequil, e que pegue as Haratinenses, aos três que pegue Haratinenses, do Brasil. E meto tudo de dobra para o Tchuvá, e disse, no Brasil, e não me dava de si para lá, e a Gorujana, e a Можем працювати, можемо мати свою релігію, можемо мати свої звичаї, свої танці. Ми практикуємо і ми організовано живемо. Бо наші предки, які приїхали до Бразилії, вони відкрили, вони, можна сказати, вони 
Ви робите те саме життя, що ми там мати. Тому ми зберігаємо ці пам'ятники, і нам дуже приємно приймати містерії, залежно від чистин світу, і оповідати, як Бразилія приймає чужинців і з ними чистці. Тебе я обрігаю. So that was actually my trip to Prudentopolis, fantastic place just to check out uh, with a beautiful nature around it. And uh, there you can see it really it does have um, Ukrainian historical legacy right in the center with like churches and museum and the Ukrainian language still living on. Now, I drove up to that waterfall you saw and believe it or not, people all the way up there, maybe one, two hours drive off, you know, I mean, didn't even have a proper asphalt uh, road to get up there from the side we came they actually had Ukrainian symbols on their farm vehicles, which was like amazing, right? So basically what happened, you'll see with the, we found a church as well, uh, maybe about an hour into the interior, a Ukrainian church. Because the people there have the same religion, uh, they tended to marry within that religion and they were Ukrainian speaking, right? So they come from a denomination that's called the Ukrainian uh, Greek Catholic uh, Church. And it's based, based mainly today in the west of Ukraine, in Galicia itself, which is that region uh, around Lviv, uh, which is where I went to learn Ukrainian uh, earlier this year. And because of that, they maintain these ties. So if you grew up with someone who speaks the same language tradition at home, then you speak it, it's more likely that you'll pass it down to your children. So that's what you see there happening in uh, Prudentopolis, and that's why the language survives, uh, which is quite remarkable because it's just this tiny, tiny speck on the map where people still speak Ukrainian, so very impressive. The other city that I went to that had Ukrainian culture in part was Kurichiva. Now Kurichiva is the capital of Parana State. Uh, it's a big city, um, around two million people I think, and it has four, well I'm putting up three, but there are four parks, and those four parks are all, each of them is dedicated to uh, each of the immigrant, main immigrant groups who came to the city, and they were Italians, Germans, Poles and Ukrainians, so it's actually a Ukrainian park there. And uh, the, the, um, when I walked into the, the kind of shop they had, it was like a little souvenir shop, uh, the guy there greeted me in Ukrainian, so I chatted a little bit with him, and this is what he had to say about being Ukrainian in Brazil. Привет, добрый вечер. Ласково просимо, то є ми мі крамниці, святого Михаїлі крамниця, є ти куричубаниці українські меморіалі. So there you go, that's the kind of unusual uh, and definitely not the typical postcard view of Brazil. So yeah, you have all these kind of slightly odd, I guess, um, legacy communities in the south of Brazil. Uh, they're not really uh, well known in North America or Europe for people who are planning to go to Brazil. Everybody thinks about samba, beaches, dancing crazily, partying for carnival. They're all great and fantastic and there are definitely very good reasons along with the beautiful nature, the warm spot. I mean Brazilians are so open to foreigners, it's pretty incredible. So they're all great reasons to go but there is this other side uh, that's also quite interesting that these other cultures have also managed to continue and to thrive in the south of Brazil. So write me in the comment section below the video if you've uh, discovered kind of a minority um, legacy culture, maybe where you're living, maybe where you're traveling, did you get to uh, speak the local language there, were the traditions, uh, were they genuine or were they a little bit kitsch, had they been uh, maybe adopted quite a lot, like for example I would say uh, that Irish Americans have given like St. Patrick's Day and all this Irish culture and it did, uh, kind of an, an additional uh, boost and uh, different slant having you know developed away from the, the homeland uh, where they came from in Ireland and you know it developed in different ways in cities like Boston or Chicago and New York of course. So that's given something a little bit different, it doesn't mean it's uh, necessarily better or worse, it's definitely different and uh, yeah let me know about your thoughts about these uh, cultures and how you can um, incorporate them into your travel trips to maybe big destinations like Brazil that people go to for other reasons. So it's um, Topebacina, which is goodbye in Ukrainian, and Atelogo, which is goodbye in Portuguese uh, from Canada Language Service.